Okay, so um, welcome, uh, James specifically. Um, like I said, we're going to sort of go through like some general resources um, on the library's website. Um, I'm going to talk about some like usual library stuff that you expect, like how to get books, how to find out what our hours are, how to get help. Um, and I'm also going to um, show you how to do a search in a database that we call, it's not really a database, in a search engine we call the uh, library's quick search. Um, and like I said, anytime you have a question, I've got the chat open. You can stick your question in the chat. You can unmute, interrupt me, feel free. Um, obviously, you will not be disrupting anyone else's learning experience. Um, so, okay, here we go. Uh, so, um, library's website. Um, this is a, let's see, actually, if we start in the university's homepage, um, it's sometimes tricky to find the library. I think we're under academics we're down here at the bottom but you can also just scroll way to the bottom of the page and you find the library right there oh christina's joined us hi christina uh, Hello. so um christina i was just telling james we're going to go over some very general uh resources today at the library's website um some of our uh tools you can search through for information um, how to find stuff like how to check out a book, how to find out our hours. Um, but Christina, if you have any questions um, during any of this, you can put them in the chat. I've got that open so, and keep an eye on that. You can also unmute and just feel free to interrupt me um, and let me know if there's anything you want me to show you again, anything you want me to focus on. Um, we were going to just do sort of a general overview, Christina, but if you have something in particular that you'd like us to to mention specifically, let me know. We can focus on it. It's clearly a real small group. Um, but also heads up, Christina, we are recording this session. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we just talked about how to find the library's website. We are uh, tamucc.edu slash library. You can also find us under academics. We're down here, um, we're the, the last button under that tab. Um, and once you get here, um, it's hopefully pretty um, easy to use. There's a lot going on. Um, so I'm gonna sort of highlight a couple things in particular. Um, one is our hours. Um, you can see that today we are open from 7.30 a.m. this morning to 30 a.m. morning. Um, we are staffed with like librarians and the whole building is staffed um, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if you need a librarian, you're going to want to do it between those normal business hours, but we are open until 1.30 a.m. this morning. Um, our hours are different on the weekends, though, so I'm going to click more hours here. And so you can see we've got um, our Friday, Saturday, and Sunday hours are a little different. Um, the times the building is open, um, that's this first line here. Um, if you need research help, we call that the Ask Us service. Um, you can sort of check out our hours here, uh, but that's how to find out if we're open or not. You can also, of course, always just call us, um, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So that's our hours. Um, the next thing I want to point out are these little icons under this Ask Us um, header. Um, if you click on any of these, they will take you to our Frequently Asked Question page. This is going to be useful if you are, um, maybe if you need to connect to the Wi-Fi. That's a very common question we get. Um, maybe you need help printing. Maybe um, you are trying to figure out how to check out a book, um, stuff like that. You can come to this FAQ page. You can search for a question here. You can browse through the topics. Um, and if you aren't finding an answer to your question, you can come over here on the side. Uh, and you can get in touch with someone at the Ask Us desk. Um, that is basically where we are um, staffing the chat. The You can call us, you can text us, you can email us. Um, you can reach out to us, whatever way works best for you. Um, and you will be put in touch with um, either a graduate assistant who works at the library one of, or one of the librarians, um, and we can help you out. Um, and we can help with all sorts of stuff. We can answer these questions for you that you see here on the FAQ, or we're happy to help with sort of more researchy things like how do I develop a research question, or um, I can't seem to find this article, or um, 
How do I find keywords so I can do a search in a database? We can help with all of that stuff. So feel free to chat with us. Um, it is real people, not robots. Um, so we're happy to help. And chat is actually available 24 seven. Um, when, like I said earlier, we are, um, the librarians are here from eight to five, Monday through Friday. But if you chat with us another time, you'll get a librarian who is from um, another university. They work for, or maybe they work for a different company or I mean institution um, and they will help you as best they can. Um, but they don't know necessarily about like assignments at TAMU CC or things like that. So um, they can help you sort of generally with research help. Um, but if you need like a specific librarian um, who knows what's going on in your class. Um, it's best to reach out to that person um, directly. So that's ask us. That's how to use the chat. Um, that chat also pops up sometimes in um, research guides or it'll show up um, in like our list of databases. Feel free to use it. It's always going to connect you to a librarian or a GA um, or one of those sort of third party librarians. So I'm going to go back to the home page. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. But again, if anything comes up, let me know. I'm kind of zipping through this. Um, so slow me down uh, if there's anything I can focus on. So other thing to know about the library's website is if you scroll just a little further down, you'll see we have all these events listed, including the one y'all are at right now, the Bell or the library resources. Um, you can also click all events up here. And this is how you can see all of the different uh, events going on at the library. We've got a lot of cool stuff for um, Hispanic Heritage Month that I recommend you check out. Um, and we have a whole bunch of virtual workshops this semester. Um, uh, next week, we're going to do one on an introduction to a tool called Zotero, which is a citation management tool. Um, it's great for researchers who are going to be collecting lots and lots of articles. Um, it sort of helps you store them. It helps you like make um, a bibliography or a reference list at the end of a paper. It's a really cool tool. So I recommend if you're able, um, come or check out the recording afterwards. But this is how to sort of get into uh, library events. And that's what I wanted to cover on the library's homepage. Um, any questions? Okay, it's not taking me back. There we go. Um, any questions about anything I've covered just there? Not at the moment. Awesome. Thank you, James. Uh, I have a good question. Sorry. Yeah. So on the little icon, I saw that there's one that says text me. Well, that mm -hmm. one, to, like, have a librarian, um, like, phone number or, like, how does that work? There's, like, so, also someone from a different university that will be answering our question? On our end, it looks the same as if you send us a chat. So um, you, you can text us using your phone and we get the alert of like, hey, Christina has asked, where's that one database that I really like? I don't know, it's not a great question, but it's an example. Um, so to us, it looks like you just chatted with us. So we will um, chat with you as if it were like instant messenger. We can send you links, we can um, talk through steps to get you, you know, whatever resource you need. Um, so that's gonna be, um, those usual hours, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, if you text us, you'll get a librarian. Um, and then outside of that, you'll get that 24-7 um, library chat co-op. So you'll, <clears throat> excuse me, outside of 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, you'll get a librarian from a different institution. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I also should let you guys know, when you chat with us, um, sometimes it helps to have two windows open, one with the chat and one where you're sort of like, working on, you know, whatever research you're doing, um, they can get disconnected. So if it disconnects, you can just chat with us again. Someone, probably the same person will pick it up again. Um, and you can just pick up where you left off. Super normal, happens all the time. Okay, great question. Um, I, let's see, next we're gonna talk about this quick search, this big old search box here in the middle of our page. Uh, the quick search box um, searches through almost literally everything in the library. So you can search here for books, you can search here for eBooks, you can search for DVDs, newspapers, um, scholarly or academic journal articles, peer reviewed articles, um, 
encyclopedia entries, all sorts of stuff you can search for in this quick search box. Um, when we do a search um, in a tool like this, I recommend you sort of um, search differently than you would if you were using Google. Don't use full sentences, just pull out those keywords like the big words in a sentence. Um, so if I'm, maybe I want to find, let's say I want to find a book. I want to find Harry Potter. I'm going to say Harry Potter um, and I'm going to hit search. These little sort of filters pop up. I don't know why I like to use the ones on the next page. They're the same. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to hit search. And this is um, sort of our library catalog. Um, you can see it's got some, um, it's pulled up over here, like a weird encyclopedia entry about Harry Potter, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, it also has, um, this one's an ebook you can see about transforming Harry. Um, the next one is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, that's the, like the play that came out a few years ago. Um, and this is one that you can see down here. It's in our popular reading section, except you can actually see it's not. Someone has checked it out currently. Um, but if we keep scrolling, um, we've got some more ebooks, more ebooks. We've got the film collection. You can see this is a video recording. It says it right here. It's a video recording. It also has this image over here that's like supposed to be like a camera. Um, but I want just the books, right? So we're going to scroll back up to the top and I'm just going to say over here are our filters. So this is it. Um, what it makes me think of is Amazon. When you search for something in Amazon, you put your, your keywords up at the top. There's a search box. You've got all the results in the middle. And then on the left, you have these filters. Um, sometimes they're called uh, so filters or limiters sometimes. Um, and it weeds out all the stuff and the results you don't want. So in Amazon, if I were searching, I would say up here, I'd be like t-shirt. And then I'd hit enter. I'd have a whole bunch of t-shirts here in the middle. And then on the side, I would say, I just want a yellow t-shirt. I want it to be a medium. Um, so this database works the same way. Most databases actually work the same way. Um, so that's, it's kind of a transferable skill. Once you can use one, you can figure out most of them. So for Harry Potter, I just want the book. So I'm going to come over to these filters and see what will help me uh, limit my results. And I can see down here, I've got this book ebook under content type. Um, if you were maybe doing research about Harry Potter, maybe you would want journal articles. Um, if you wanted to read, um, maybe uh, there's something about JK Rowling in the news, you could limit to newspaper article. Um, so you can sort of weed out things that you're not interested in. Um, I'm going to say, I just want a book. So I'm going to check that. Um, and you, you'll notice it says book slash ebook here. Um, and when we look over to our results, I still have this transforming Harry book. I've got something, 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 something that is not in English, maybe. And I've got a book on Harry Potter and beyond. I don't want those. I just want to read Harry Potter. So what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to come back over here to these filters and the way I'm going to get rid of all the ebooks is I'm going to scroll on down to library location and I'm going to say, just give me the books that are in the main collection. That's all those books on the second floor. If you've been to the library on the second floor, we have really tall shelves um, and they've got all of our scholarly stuff. So I'm going to check on, I'm going to check that filter. Um, I'm also going to check the ju whoopsies. Scroll back down. I'm also going to check the juvenile filter um, because we have a collection of books that's called um, juvenile. It just means like young person, right? Um, we have this collection mostly for our education majors. They will use them for like lesson plans and stuff like that. Um, but that's maybe what Harry Potter is going to be in. So I'm going to check that one as well. And here we go. So um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, this book is currently available, which means it's on the shelves. We can check it out. Um, if it says it's not available, that usually means someone has already checked it out. Um, and I'll show you in just a second how you can put a hold on something. Um, sometimes it says missing. Our books go missing sometimes. Um, sometimes people check them out and they forget to return them. 
Um, sometimes maybe we shelved it in the wrong place. Maybe it got shoved back between books and we can't find it. Um, that's sort of what missing means. Um, but this one is available and over here it says juvenile. So I know it's in the juvenile collection, which is um, if you're looking at our, all of our stacks of books on the second floor of the library, um, there are sort of three levels of stacks. There's the lowest level, which is to the left. Um, it's the farthest left shelves. Um, and those have all of our oversized books. There are lots of books that don't fit on our shelves. And those are usually, um, they're, uh, they're books where images matter usually. So like photography or um, anatomy, um, things like that. Those tend to be oversized. And then the next level of shelves, sort of the middle level, that's our juvenile collection. So I know that Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is in that juvenile section. Um, to check out the book, I would grab this number. I would write it down. This is called a call number. Um, call numbers are uh, a way for us as librarians to keep track of these books. And it's a way to let us know where to put them back so that we can consistently find them. So um, I know that if I want to find Harry Potter, I need to go to PZ7 r7 whatever whatever so i'll go upstairs um, with that number and i'll find the book with the corresponding number and it should be harry potter so i can grab it off the shelf i can go to our circulation desk which is on the main floor or i'm sorry on the first floor of the library big old desk as you walk in i can give them the book swipe my sand dollar and i can check out harry potter the other option if you don't feel like coming to the library or if you don't feel like going up into the second floor and searching for yourself um, you can go ahead and click on the title of the book you want. Mm -hmm. It takes you to this sort of weird in-between page um, where like, it looks almost like you've gone to the wrong place. You haven't. You're in the right place. Still a library page. It says library up here in the corner. Um, you can sign in using that dual authenticate thing. Oh, good. It logged me in. And then you can actually request the book right here. So if you hit request, I'm not going to because I don't want it to actually happen. Um, it will send an alert to us at the library um, to go and get that book and check it out for you. And we will have it for you at the circulation desk. So you can just pop into the library, say, hey, I have a hold to pick up. Um, swipe your sand dollar. They'll grab the book for you. And then you can be on your merry way. You don't even have to go up and search for the books yourselves. So that's an option um, if you are just short, short on time. Okay, any questions about checking out a book? Uh, yes, another question, sorry. Yeah, great, no, that's um, what we're here for. So I haven't checked out a book here yet. Mm -hmm. um, is there like a fee I pay or is just like, just I just have to swipe my sand dollar? Yep, you just swipe your sand dollar. We work just like the public library. It does not cost you money to check out books or DVDs. It doesn't check. It doesn't cost you money um, to do anything, except if you like check out. You can check out lots of stuff at the library, including like headphones. You can check out study rooms upstairs. You can check out like a literal like a key. If you lose something like the key or the headphones, then you do get charged because we have to replace the item. But checking books out, not no fee. Um, looking at journal articles, there's no fee. You pay tuition or you work here, you pay, uh, you live in Texas, you pay taxes. Um, so you have essentially already paid for these items um, and you get to use them. That's a good question. Um, yeah, also don't pay for anything. Uh, if you need a book that we do not have, or if you need a journal article that we don't immediately have, I'm gonna show you a way to get a hold of that without having to pay for it. So don't pay for any, I would say, research materials. I'd also say don't pay for any entertainment materials. Um, we can find them for you for free. That's a good and question. What's like, okay, and what's like the time, um, like when am I supposed to like return my books? Like let's say if I were to check, it, check out a book today, by when do I have to return it? Let me find um, on our homepage under borrow and request. Uh, I'm going to go to checkouts, renewals, and fines. And it's got 
Aura. So check out details here. So if you're an undergrad, Christina, you can have a book for three, an item for three weeks, and you can renew it three times. So you can get Harry Potter, and if you don't read it for three weeks, you can log into your library account, which I'll show you in just a second, and you can renew it, and you can have it for another three weeks. If it happens again, you can renew it again. You can have it for three more weeks. So you get to do that renewing three times. So um, if someone has requested that book, we can't renew it to you. You have to give it back to us so we can give it to the next person. But um, if no one else is looking for that book, keep renewing it. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know, Christina, um, what, so what um, borrower type you are. I don't know if you're undergrad or... Um, if you're a grad student, faculty, but here are the um, the checkout times for everybody. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good question. Um, I should have that an the answer to that memorized. I don't. Um, okay, so if you are, um, if you do have a book checked out, um, and you're maybe you didn't get around to it, or you only got halfway through the book. Um, which happens to me often. I feel like that's what I procrastinate on the most. Um, if you need to renew a book on the library's homepage under borrow and request, there's my library account. Click on that. Uh, Y'all might see my library account. Yep, there it is. Okay. Um, so when you check in, um, I'm sorry, when you log in, you will see um, your loans over here, and it has the due dates on them. They are red. That does not necessarily mean they're overdue, but it does scare me every time I see them. Um, and if you would like to renew one of them, you click on the title, and you can say renew. Um, if it's not renewable, you'll see down here I have a Doctor Who DVD checked out that I cannot renew. But all the others I can renew. Um, and again, our due dates are right here at the top. It will also tell us here um, if we have any fines or fees. Again, that's just going to happen if um, you, you lose an item and we have to replace it. We will um, ask you to pay for us to replace it, but it's not usually a, a big problem. Okay, any questions about that? How to uh, find due dates, how to renew... Okay. All right. So, um, like I said just a minute ago, if there is something that we um, do not have that you want, um, we can do something that's called interlibrary loan, which is a service where basically we, you put in a request and we call a bunch of libraries and we're like, hey, who's going to send this to us? Um, and then someone sends it to us and then you get it. Um, this is, we don't literally call someone, it's an automated system, but that's essentially how it works. So the way this would happen would be if um, maybe you want a journal article. Maybe you're doing some research. Um, you can come back to this, this borrow and request tab here. Go all the way down to interlibrary loan. Um, this again is another sort of weird like in-between page that looks a little different. Um, but you're still in the right place. Um, you can log in to, the system is called Iliad. Um, they do it, they call it that because it's I-L-L, -L, Interlibrary Loan. They call it Iliad, they think they're being cute, it's fine. Um, but it's a little silly and confusing. But again, you're in the right place. So to log into this, um, you just use your island ID and password, the same as you use for Blackboard or for your email. And when you log in, um, you can come over here to new requests and you can say i want a book or you could say i want an article or a book chapter maybe you have um uh like a really specialized interest and you want like an encyclopedia entry or something really really specific um you can get that you click um sorry i did that quickly i clicked um article slash book chapter under new request and now it's asking for the information like the journal or book title, um, the article title or the chapter title, author, volume, issue, year, pages, all these things. Um, and towards the bottom, it says need by date. What that means is um, what day do you need this item by? 
So if you're doing research and you're like, well, my paper is due on, um, you know, uh, October 21st, I won't need the article after that. You can say, I need this by October 21st. If you are doing, you know, uh, if you're looking for something entertaining, um, like I currently have a Doctor Who DVD checked out through Interlibrary Loan, I put the need date as like um, 12, uh, 30, whoopsies, 12, 30, 21, um, 2021. It doesn't matter when I get that DVD, so I just give them a date that's way, way out there. Um, so they don't have to worry about it. Um, if we aren't able to get you an item by the time you need it, we will do our best and we're usually pretty good at it. Um, but if it's something that's really specific and we have to ship it from a long way, um, we will cancel the request um, if we reach your need by date and we haven't gotten it to you. That's why they ask for that. Um, if you are looking for something like a journal article or a book chapter, what will happen is a library will um, you know, maybe the library at College Station, Texas A&M College Station, they'll scan that article for you. You'll get an email that says, your scan is ready, you, your, your article is ready, log into Iliad and access it. When that happens, you'll just log into Iliad, whoopsies, I logged off, oh man. You'll log in, you'll get the email, you'll log in, and you'll see right here, um, you will see, uh, or sorry, down here, electronically received articles. You'll see a place for you to click and download the article. I recommend you download it if you've, if you've requested it. The requests go away after 30 days. So once 30 days are up, the electronic, the PDF is gone um, and you can't access it anymore. You'd have to re-request it. So if it's something you need for research, um, you can log in and you can download the PDF and keep it safe on whatever device you use. Um, but it'll go away if you don't do that. Um, if you are requesting something that is a physical item, like you want a book or a DVD, um, you will get an email that says, hey, we got your interlibrary loan request. Come on by and pick it up. And you can see this is these are two examples of that. Um, so I can I actually I actually have this one ready to pick up now and I haven't picked it up yet. I should do that today. Um, but for that, you come into the library, you go to the circulation desk, the big desk up front. And you say, hey, I have an interlibrary loan to pick up. And they're like, cool. And then they get it for you, you check it out to you, and you're free to go on your merry way. So that's interlibrary loan. And that's one of the reasons that I say, you know, don't pay for anything. Even if it's something we don't have, we can get it for you. Um, if you're doing research, if you need like an electronic, something small, like an article that another library probably has an electronic copy of, we can sometimes get it to you like within the hour sometimes, um, but it usually it'll take maybe a couple days, but we can get it to you. So don't pay for it. Um, if it's a book, because they have to physically ship it to us, it can take a couple weeks, but we can still get it for you. So um, please don't pay for anything. It's so expensive to go to college, save your money here. We will get things for you for free. Any questions about interlibrary loan? Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna go back to the library's homepage then, which is tamucc.edu slash library. Um, and I'm gonna jump back into that quick search because I wanna show you an example of what it looks like to search for an article. Um, Christina, James, any chance either of you are doing um, a research project right now? Um, topic? Um, not right now. Okay. Christina, are you researching anything? Uh, I just did, like, last week. Uh, it was regarding probation. Oh, and interesting. And social work. Yeah. That's um, super cool. It, it was, but I was just, I was messy with the uh, database. With the database. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to risk it because, I mean, I knew that this event was coming up. So I'm like, eh, I'll be better prepared for next time. <laughs> Heck yes. Yeah. Let's do a search right now. We're going to do a search and a quick search for, um, wait, did you say probation or prohibition? Probation. Probation. You're okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> probation. And we're going to say, and social work. Did you see how I capitalized and? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you just did something. I did it, which... <laughs> 
now I know to what to do for next time. Exactly. So what we do when we're talking to the database is we have to be really, really explicit. With Google, you can be like probation and social work, and it will give you lots of cool stuff. But with a library database like this, we use certain like, I call them in between words. They're technically called Boolean operators, which is a silly name. So I call them in between words. Um, and we put these phrases like and is one of them um, between words to tell the database only give me back results that have the word probation and the phrase social work. Otherwise, it might give me something about probation. It might give me something about social work. But I, I specifically want, like, let's say research articles that only have both phrases in them. So that's why we say and. And you do have to capitalize it, um, which is weird, but it is what it is. So I'm going to hit search, or I'm going to hit enter now. And let's see what we get. We got 191,809 things about probation and social work. So that's too much stuff. I'm not going to read all that stuff, and I don't recommend that you do either. So to limit these things down, we're going to do just like we did with books. We're going to come over here and say, um, first of all, I just want journal articles. Journal articles are what we use. Uh, it's... it's um, when we use this filter, what we're telling the database is only give me scholarly or academic journal articles. So this weeds out stuff like magazine articles or newspaper articles. Um, and it limits us to just things that are more research oriented, more academic, more scholarly. Um, so that's, that's a filter that I recommend folks use. Um, I also recommend if you are doing your research and you don't have time to request something through interlibrary loan, if maybe you're doing your research, which this doesn't seem like Christina or James, either of your style, but some people are doing their research at like 3 a.m. before an assignment is due. They need only things they can access immediately. So for that situation, I recommend you click full text online. And that weeds out anything that is like a physical copy, right? Anything you need to come into the library to get. Um, and then do you all know what peer reviewed means? Um, it's in the chat. Uh, no one's talking. Oh, eh, sort of. Fair enough. Um, I'll talk about it anyways then. So peer review is a process by which um, we sort of like double check the validity or the quality of a journal article. It is a process where um, someone does their research, they write their article, they cite all their sources, and they send it out to a journal an academic journal. Um, for example, this first one here, this is in the probation journal. The next one down is the British Journal of Social Work. Um, if you are sending something out to a journal, um, it might get looked at by an editor and then published, and that's awesome. If you are sending your work out to a peer review journal, then what happens is the editor of the journal looks at it and they're like, yeah, that's relevant. And then they send it on to um, the peer review panel, which is a panel of experts on that subject. So, for example, in um, the British Journal of Social Work, the people who are reviewing that journal are probably going to be social workers in Britain. They're probably going to be researchers who are interested in social work. Um, maybe they're going to be experts on probation. Um, it's, it's those peers, right? They are... Uh, my peers in the sense that we are all theoretically researchers and experts on the same subject. So if I were to write an article, submit it to a journal and have it peer reviewed, it would be looked at by librarians and by maybe educators. And what these peer reviewers do is they go through the article with like a fine tooth comb. They check things like your grammar. Um, they check things like um, if I did my research and I was sort of sketchy about it and I didn't tell them exactly step by step how I got my data, they would be like, mm, we're not sure we trust you. You should expand on that. Tell us more about how you got your data. Um, they might also give feedback like, hey, you should include this other researcher's perspective um, to sort of round out your article. And that's their job. They're supposed to be super duper nitpicky. And then they give me back all these critiques 
and I make all the changes and I send it back again. And then they do the same thing again. And I'll make all the changes again. And then finally, maybe after sometimes a couple rounds of peer review, then they finally will publish it. It's a long, exhausting, excruciating process, but by the end of it, um, researchers like the three of us, um, we can look at articles that are peer reviewed and say, yep, lots of experts or several experts have looked at this and they all agree that this was a high quality piece of work. It's not perfect. No system is perfect. Um, sometimes even peer reviewed articles can get like redacted or like taken back. Um, but it's less rare. It's less common. Um, so that's why folks like peer reviewed um, articles. You might get later on professors might say you need five peer reviewed articles. This is why they're asking for peer review. It's an extra level of sort of like quality assurance. So I'm going to go ahead and click peer review. It's going to weed out a bunch of articles um, and you can see now we're down to 44,000. Which is still a lot. Um, the next filter I recommend folks use over here, the date range. Um, I like to just say the last five years, um, something like probation, social work. These are things that have changed a lot, right? I don't really care about what they were up to in the seventies. That's a whole other story. I want to know what's happening more currently. So that's why I would choose a filter like that. Um, you can scroll on down and you can see that you could choose a subject area. Um, that's sort of like what perspective are you approaching this from? Maybe you want to talk about this from a legal perspective, from law. Maybe you are interested in this from the social work perspective. Maybe psychology, you want to know what is this doing to people's brains. Um, so you can sort of get specific here. You can narrow things down to just what you need. Um, 9,000 articles is still to me more than I really want to go through, but I'm going to leave it here for now because I want to show us some other cool stuff while we're here. Um, and once you've entered, sorry, one other th way to filter things down is to add more keywords up here. So maybe I want to say probation and social work and whoopsies, Texas. I'm going to hit enter and see if that narrows us down a little bit. Yeah, we're down to 1,000 now. So now all of my articles should have probation and social work and Texas. Um, it's just a way to sort of get rid of a few things um, and hopefully make sure that you're looking at results that are relevant and interesting to you. Once you are looking at your results and you're like, yeah, these look pretty on point. These look useful to me. What you can do is um, a couple things. First, click on the title. This is going to open up um, a uh, the place where you can access the full text of the article. So you can see we aren't actually on a library uh, a library website anymore. We are in Sage Journals. Um, that's the database that we are in. Do you remember when I said the quick search searches through all of the library resources? This is one of our resources that it searches through. So when you find something you like and you click on the title, it takes you to the full text of the article. Um, when you are doing some research, I recommend you read the abstract first. Um, the abstract is like a summary of an article. So when you read it, you get a good idea of what you're about to read um, more information on. So I recommend you read the abstract because what if it's not relevant to you and you just read a whole article and wasted some time? Don't waste time. You are researchers, you are studying, you got a lot going on, read the abstract, make sure it's useful to you. Um, and once you've read it and you're like, yep, that's relevant, I'm interested, you can do a couple things. Um, you can scroll down and continue to read the full article or, and this is what I recommend you do, you can download a PDF of the article. Um, I recommend you do that because one, that means you will always have access to this article. Um, you don't have to go find it again. And two, if you download a PDF, um, you can uh, like onto your personal, excuse me, onto your personal device, or you could upload it into Google Drive or something like that. You can highlight on that copy, um, and so I think that's a useful way for me to like help myself take notes. So I like to download a PDF. Um, the next thing that I recommend you do once you find an article that's useful to you is um, we're back in the quick search results page now. Um, I recommend you do two things here. Grab the citation. Sorry, that was fast. 
this little bunny ears, they're supposed to be quotation marks, um, this will grab a citation for you. I personally hate writing citations and references. I just hate it. It's irrational, but it's not my thing. So what we do is we click that button and then we can tell the uh, quick search what format our paper has to be in. I'm going to click on APA. That's a pretty common one. You might be using Chicago. You might be using MLA. Lots of options. Um, APA is what I'm going to click. And here is my citation. So I can copy this. I can paste it wherever I keep track of my research. I tend to use a Google, uh, like a Google Doc or a Word Doc. And I put the citation there, and then I take notes under it. Um, that's how I stay organized. You have your own methods. Um, do what works best for you. But grab this citation. Um, double check to make sure that it's in the right format style. Every once in a while, something weird will happen where maybe like the title of the article will be in all caps or something weird. Um, this is a, it's not an intelligent tool. Um, it is doing the best it can, but you are critical thinkers. You are smarter than this machine. So if you see a mistake, fix it. Don't trust that this has done it correctly. Um, I don't want anyone to get points taken off uh, of assignments if something's wrong. And finally, the last thing I recommend you do is click on this little icon. It says when you hover over it, it says perma permanent link. Um, you might also see the phrase permalink, same thing. And it's usually this icon. It's usually two little chain links hooked up is what they're supposed to look like. Um, and if you click on this, it will give you a link. Um, I'm going to copy this link, paste it in a new tab to show you what it does. It brings you right back to that article every single time. So now you can jump into it. You can get the full text, get the PDF, grab a citation, whatever you need to do. Um, but that's what that permanent link is. It permanently brings you back to this article every time so that you don't have to recreate this search and put all those filters on. Um, and go through that whole mess again. You can just grab the permalink and be good to go. Um, I'm going to jump into one more article just to show you that sometimes they look different. Nope, that's still Sage Journals. Darn it. How about this one? Cool. So this is a different one. This is Taylor and Francis Online is the um, database. Um, and you can see this one, you can see the abstract. You can scroll down, read through the whole, the full text of the article. Um, and here's the PDF button up here. They look a little different um, depending on the database you're in, but there's always gonna be a PDF article um, and you can always scroll through and read the full text. Okay, that was a lot to throw at you. How are you feeling right now about accessing journal articles? or electronic materials? Um, I feel pretty confident. Awesome. Um, Christina, Same. how you doing? Same, I learned new stuff, which I'm gonna for sure use in my other papers. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, one thing I do wanna tell you up here at the top, um, we said probation and social work and Texas. Um, those in-between words like and, um, you can use those. You can also use the word or. So maybe if you're saying um, Texas or, and I'm doing all caps again, um, Oklahoma. What I'm now saying is, to the database is give me articles on probation and social work and either Texas or Oklahoma. Um, I put parentheses around these, honestly, just to keep my own mind organized, but also to be, again, explicit with the database. So this is going to broaden our search a little bit because now I'm telling the database I'm cool with articles that have either Texas or Oklahoma in them, but it's got to have one of them. Um, that's how you use another one of those in-between words. Um, this is maybe not a great example of it, but you can use this if there are like multiple terms for something. Like, um, give me um, vaccinations or immunizations. That might work, right? Um, you're okay with either word being used. That's how to do that. Um, okay, so um, we've got 
just under 10 minutes left. The last thing I want to show you real quick is on the library's homepage. If I scroll down to just under the quick search, you can see there's a database link. You can get to a journals. Course reserves is something we have. If you have a professor who's put a book on reserve, you can check that out. Um, I'm not check it out. You can learn more about what's available here. But I want to show y'all the research guides um, first. So I'm going to click this, this button. It's blue, but it turns green when I hover. Research guides are like little mini websites that librarians have created to put all the useful, uh, all of the useful stuff in one place for you. So, um, for example, if you are in, let's see, um, nursing, if I click on nursing and health sciences, there is a nursing research guide that's going to open up and there's my big old face right there with my contact information. That's because I'm the liaison librarian to the college of nursing. Each department has their own librarian, um, and so you can find their contact information on the subject guide. So here I've got all of the main resources for the folks who are going to be doing nursing research. Over along the side, you can see I've got how to find background information, how to do test prep, stuff like that. Um, and each research guide is different because it depends on what sort of subject you're in. You can see the chat pops up again. Um, I'm going to say no thank you because we're busy. But you can use that chat and that's again going to connect you to the same librarians or graduate assistants um, at TAMU CC or it's going to connect you to a librarian who is uh, at a different institution, but they can still help. So those are those are subject guides. We also have things called course guides. Um, so, for example, here's one nursing 3318. Um, this is a guide again, like a little mini web page that I've made for people in the class. NURS 3318. Um, it's got specific resources uh, that are just for this class, um, so they don't have to sort of scramble around the library resources to find them. They're all right here. Um, the last thing I want to mention under research guides is that we have one guide under library services called Fun Stuff at Bell Library. I couldn't think of a better name. So, what this has is an explanation of um, what I think of as the fun stuff at the library. Um, we have a popular reading collection on our first floor, and that's the fun stuff. It is cookbooks and um, it's horror books. There's a lot of Stephen King and it's um, young adult fiction and it's graphic novels. It's, it's biography. Some people find biographies fun. I'm not one of them, but they exist. Um, so you can check out the popular reading collection. This tells you how. Um, that juvenile collection I mentioned has some fun stuff. We've got DVDs. This shows you how to search there. We've got streaming video. Um, we've got this tool called Canopy, which is, if I click on it, it looks sort of like it's like a, it's like an academic version of Netflix. And it's got a bunch of documentaries. You can see here it's highlighting um, Hispanic Heritage Month um, uh, stories and documentaries. Um, it's got lots and lots of PBS stuff on here, um, PBS specials, documentaries, um, lots and lots of cool stuff here that is, again, free to you um, to use. So feel free to use it. Um, back on that fun stuff guide, I've also got some stuff here about how to search in the library's catalog, which we just did. You guys are pros at. Um, and I've got, um, finally, the thing I want to mention is the iCreate lab which is um, on the second floor of the library. It's a physical space and it's got all sorts of amazing technology. Um, we've got, um, let's see, does it show? Well, it tells you about it over here. We've got 3D printers, we have laser cutters, we have um, embroidery machines, sewing machines, we have podcast recording and editing equipment, we have video editing stuff, so much cool stuff up there. And it's staffed by people who are awesome. Um, the the person who runs it, his name is David. He's very, very cool, and he is just psyched to teach anyone about the tech. There's also student workers up there and graduate assistants who are really lovely and happy to, to teach people how to use the machinery. Um, so I recommend you check that out. It gets really popular um, towards the end of the semester, um, towards the holidays. People like to make gifts up there. You can, like, etch people's names into Christmas ornaments, or you can, you know... Um, you can print posters up there and stickers, all sorts of cool stuff. So it's a really cool place. And it's what I think of as the fun stuff.
Um, and then because I mentioned it briefly, but didn't tell you how to find out, um, you have a uh, librarian who is here to help you. You have a bunch of librarians here to help you, but you have one specific subject librarian who knows the resources for that subject really, really well. Um, so Christina, I'm guessing you are maybe in social work. Um, so to find the social work librarian, you're going to go to research help, this blue tab here, and you're going to click subject librarian directory. So from here, um, social work, I think, is that college of education maybe? So Tricia is our, Patricia Hernandez is our, um, counseling librarian, um, is social work maybe? Maybe it's not its own subject. It might be under counseling is what I'm thinking of. So um, Patricia Hernandez is the librarian to that um, particular department. But, you know, Christina, um, you might be coming at social work from a different angle. Maybe you're coming at it from psychology, which is in liberal arts. And you can see here that Jennifer Anderson is the psychologist. Oh, there it is, social work. Ha ha. Cool. Um, so you can see Jennifer Anderson would be the librarian for that. Um, Christina, James, um, are y'all in classes currently where, you know, would you like to find your librarian right now? Would that be helpful? You just found mine. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and James, I know you're, um, you're in your first year, so you might not know who you need to go to yet, but yeah. now you know how to figure it out. Okay. Okay, so we've got two minutes left. I have gone through lots of information. Uh, we talked about how to get to the library's website. It's under academics, library. We talked about how to use that quick search for finding research articles, but also for how to find books. Um, we've talked about how to check out books, how to put them on hold. Um, we've talked about searching, talked about research guides. So anything else that you would like to know while we're here. Hey. Uh, no, okay, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just ask. Yeah. James, do you want to ask first? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Or, oh, I was just saying I don't really have any questions right now. Oh. Awesome. Then go for it, Christina. The floor is yours. Okay, so in the second floor, the I create, mm -hmm. right? That's what's called. Um, do we have to like request a time or like just go whenever we want to? Yep, you can walk on in. Um, I also should mention that it does cost money to use some of the equipment up there. Um, that is one of the things that we have to, um, we have to buy the materials to be used, right? So for like, um, let's see if I can find it under visit and study maybe. There's iCreate Lab. Um, so here there's a pricing, uh, option. So for things like the 3d printer, the filament that those printers use, we do have to charge for that. Um, and this here gives you, uh, this lays out all of the pricing that you have to keep in mind. Um, sometimes it's done by time. Like how long are you using the embroidery machine? Um, sometimes it is based on, um, like 3d printing. It's based on the filament per gram. Um, and so, um, that is, uh, something to keep in mind. Um, but I hope that it will not, um, uh, discourage you from going up there and learning. There's, they also sometimes have, uh, stuff up there that you can practice on. Um, if you don't want to, you know, you can take in your own fabric to sew on, or you can take in your own, like, um, uh, wood to, to engrave or things like that. So you can take in your own materials, um, they will still charge you for using the machines um, but based on how long you're using them, but um, that is that is how to, to go up there and use them. You do not have to reserve a time. You can just walk on in. So on pain base, um, can we use our credit card or debit card or does it have to be in the sand dollar? Nope, you can use your credit card or debit card. Question. Okay, great. I think that's all I have to ask. Awesome. Well, in that case, um, I am going to ask you both if you would please um, copy a link. Uh, I'm sticking a link in the chat. 
um, and in the hopes that you two might be willing to take a, a really quick survey and let me know how this workshop went. Let me know if it was useful to you or if there are other topics you want us to cover in these workshops um, because they, they change every semester. So if there's something you all need, we can make that happen. Um, and thank you both for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Um,